Here we are, we're in uh, Rubu Maasai. This is probably one of the most southern Maasai blocks that we have in Tanzania. Um, really what this block is good for is monster leopard, big buffalo. There's a lot of Maasai land species that Brad doesn't have yet. So the, the main priority for this trip was for us to get it, not just try to get a leopard, but try to get a, a really monster leopard or once in a lifetime type of deal. So um, we just got in just before midday. We had a quick lunch got situated we're just gonna have a nice drive out this evening and see what we see and uh, like Brad said start getting blood on the ground so 27 hours later we made it it's a little cooler out here than what I what I expected nice beautiful day glad to be here second day here in Ruvu. Yesterday we spent the majority of the day just trying to suss out the situation in the block, trying to look at leopard spots, take a look at the game situation. Today we tried for buffalo in the morning. Unfortunately we, we busted two different Duggar boys. Uh, we decided that we were going to start the baiting process and we were very fortunate on top of this ridge. We saw a nice herd of zebras, um, managed to make a really nice stalk. They crossed onto the other side of the ridge and uh, this beautiful stallion here just stood long enough for us to get a shot. A very difficult shot with the 416 with all the brush in the way and just the distance. Uh, but Brad pulled off a fantastic shot like usual. Zebra didn't go very far, more than about 50, 60 yards. Um, congratulations Brad, we got blood on the ground and most importantly we can start the baiting process. It hasn't been long, I think, what, not even 10 minutes and we came across this fantastic East African Impala. Uh, this has actually been one of those really special animals. It's, it's one that I've been after for the last two to three years and he's extremely old, very switched on. Every time I see him, he's bolting and Brad did a, I mean, a sensational shot for that distance. I mean, dropped him, uh, he didn't go 10 yards. And Brad, this is a, like I told you, this is the East African Impala. Um, the much bigger one in terms of horn size and this is a phenomenal specimen for for an east african so congratulations buddy and good shooting awesome thank the lord for second chances <laughs>
got it done here this morning uh, uh, in Rugu, Masai land. This is our third morning to hike down into this creek bottom to look for buffalo. We, uh, we struck out the past uh, past two days and, and Barry and the, and the team did a great job of, of getting on this uh, on this big bull, mature bull, uh, early this morning. We were about 15 minutes earlier than the past two days, so we think that made a big difference. Um, first buffalo with a double. Now I see why everybody chases these uh, big African bulls uh, with doubles, but the 500 uh, did its job, so happy to have this guy.
morning looking for some lesser kudu. Bumped into a couple, couldn't really get onto them. Left that area down close to camp, came around up here, managed to get onto a couple of zebra. Followed some heart beast for miles. Long way. Long, long way. <laughs> Eventually stopped for a little bit of food and a break, jumped in the cruiser, and lo and behold, just next to the cruiser, yeah, this beautiful old Esekudu was standing. Ran off a little bit and uh, waited under a little bush as we as we made an approach. And we saw just the beautiful worn-off tips, thick ridged bases, and we knew this was the one. Um, Brad got onto the sticks. Put in a perfect shot behind the shoulder, didn't even go 50 yards. Um, walked up to it and we just saw what a tank of an old beautiful lesser kudu. Completely worn, old, ridged. Couldn't ask for a better, better lesser kudu. Great shooting Brad. Thank well you. Done. It only took uh, my man Bear here, uh, what are we, day eight, day nine to yeah. find us a, a proper <laughs> lesser. So glad to have him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, dude. You got it. So we're just finishing up the new setup. Uh, we had actually baited on a tree on the opposite side of the creek bed. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, the leopard decided that he was going to start coming from the side of the blind, which is extremely unusual because the wind was perfect for the blind. Where the leopard used to come from was the opposite direction, but as things are with cats, they're unpredictable. Um, so what we did is we decided to pull the bait down. The walk-in approach wasn't good, and we've given it about two days to let this place settle. Uh, we came back with a full proof proof plan to pre-build the blind, put the bait up, have everything situated, make sure there's no mistakes and make sure that everything's perfect. Uh, so what we've done here is we put two legs of zebra, put them quite high up because I want him to struggle to feed. If I give it to him too low, he's going to eat too much and the chances of him leaving early are going to be a lot higher. We'll put the warthog up against this embankment here. I'll have him suspended to two stakes in the ground um, and so that the leopard can feed on him on the ground. We're going to put the water, the blind is going to be up on top of the rocks over there and we have a much better walk-in approach than what we had before because we can use as a little tributary that goes all the way upstream where the leopard, there's no ways if he's wor working up and down this creek bed that he's going to see us. So I think I have a really good feeling about this. Um, this one's actually a little bit more sentimental because my uncle was with me in February and that was the last time that I had the privilege of spending some time with him. and. He wasn't meant to be on that trip, but he came, he helped me out. And when he came and he saw this setup, he had told me, he said, this is how I would have put it. So this is really, uh, you know, it's something a little spiritual. I know my uncle's here and I know he's kind of pointing us in the right direction. And I think this is where, if it's gonna happen, we're gonna get it done. So stay tuned and let's see, let's see what happens. Here we are day 10 in Ruvu Masai land. Uh, we've made several attempts to try to get in range of 
this beautiful Coke's Heart of Beast. Um, hadn't been able to do it until today. We spotted him after lunch uh, from the other ridge and were able to uh, uh, go around the ridge instead of going through the, the brush that Lauren was gonna drag us through. So we uh, got close, ended up making a, a decent shot on it with a 300 and uh, dropped him where he lays. After a bit of bad luck with, with Leopard this morning and then this evening with Masai disturbing us, we we're on our way back to our fly camp that we set up here and just before dark turned a corner and Brad had been saying how badly he wants to shoot a bush pig and there they were out in the open there. First we couldn't really see the, the ball and after looking closely we, we saw him coming out of the bushes there and we saw he was an absolute these tusk sticking out, which is it's quite a quite something you don't often see that. And um, Brad put in a little a little stalk there, perfect shot. Didn't even go 10 yards. And here he is. Great shooting, great way to finish the day. It was awesome, awesome spotting. Day 31. <laughs> finally got a bush pig. We chased him in Rukwa uh, for the whole safari uh, last year and couldn't quite get it done and, and uh, thanks to the, your good eyes we were finally able to get it done here. Thank you. Good shooting. Yes sir. That was intense. That was really intense. 
are on day 14. This is the culmination really of our hunt. Um, we've worked so hard, Brad's worked so hard for this cat. I mean, we did 21 days in Rockwell. Unfortunately, we just had the worst luck you can possibly imagine. It just didn't come together. When, we, when Brad decided to come back, we picked Maasai land, um, and this Maasai land area in particular because it hasn't really been hunted that hard. Um, the reason being is just the size, the genetics of the leopards that we get here. Uh, we started off strong, we started taking, we took two buffaloes, uh, we started getting the bait, started putting up baits, and we've really had a tough time. I mean, when you talk about bad luck, I mean, we had a big leopard we were working on, and unfortunately, every time we would sit there was something that happened and we had the Maasai's come in and I mean we called it Kilimanjaro because we had a walk-in approach and poor Brad I had to <laughs> make him walk all the way up Kilimanjaro every day for the last five days um, and we were very fortunate this morning we came and checked one of our other baits before we went to camp and this monster leopard had come back um, thank goodness the blind and everything was ready so the leopard was already used to the setup we got on. We got in a little bit later this evening, but I mean, just after you know, 6:10, 6, 6:15, 6, uh, Dallas pointed him out. He went straight, straight in. Um, Brad did a fantastic shot. Uh, Brad, to get, just to give you perspective, to get this caliber leopard and especially to hunt a leopard in Maasai land, it's, it's no easy feat. I mean, these leopard live here undetected, in amongst the Maasai, in the livestock. I mean that human wildlife conflict aspect of it makes it, it makes it extremely difficult to get one of these cats. So for you to get one and to get this caliber of a leopard, I mean, this is what we call a true monster and this is a once in a lifetime leopard. You'll struggle to find any of your friends or anyone you know to have this <laughs> caliber of leopard. And honestly, Brad, no one more deserving. I mean, you've been so patient. The 21 days we did in Rukwa, um, you're never despondent. You just pick yourself up and it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to guide you. Um, honestly, you're a perfect gentleman, so congratulations. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Thank you. Thanks to the whole team of Tanzania Big Game. What an what a awesome trip from the food to, to, to the, to, to the perfect PHs, to the, to the trackers, to the drivers, to the whole team. Did a lot of work. Hell, we even, we thought we lost Barry. He got uh, scorped uh, yesterday, but he was able to bounce back and fight through it. Um, uh, stung by a scorpion, so it was uh, a lot of hard work that went into it, and and I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody's effort uh, with the whole staff and the whole team, uh, first class all the way around. Well done, guys. <laughs>
kidding me. I think we just doubled up on Buffy's this morning. Uh, we were still coming down the, the road and, and looked up, and there's uh, there's actually two dead buffaloes in here. It was a wild west this morning. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's the one who spotted them. My first uh, double buffalo with a double gun. What an awesome hunt this morning. We were coming back down to where we've seen a lot of large buffalo on camera the past few days. And the boy stopped us uh, at daybreak and saw him on the road. And I think everybody on the truck was still half asleep. And, and we were able to put it together and get on these uh, uh, buffalo really quick. What an awesome, awesome adventure to have to uh, two of my biggest buffaloes here, definitely um, my biggest here. So super exciting, super fun. Uh, what a special place and, and Rubu Masai Lam with, with special people. And we've survived uh, a couple tick bite fevers and some scorpion, scorpion attacks. So uh, uh, so we've made, I think, day 18, day 17 now. And, and uh, what an awesome, awesome hunt. here at uh, Jacobo's Boma, our lead tracker here. This is his community. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a lot of people that live within this little community here. Um, part of what we do as hunters is we really try to give back to the people that live in this concession and around this concession. Um, so we took two bufflers today and so we're doing our part distributing the meat. Um, a lot of these guys really don't have access to protein. so. That's what we're doing right now, and as you can tell by the faces, everybody's really happy that they're going to be getting some protein. And they're very thankful to Brad for being the provider. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. This is what it's about right here. So it's a special treat to get to do this. Well, here we are on day 18 in Ruvu Masai land. Finally got our hands on a fringe-eared oryx. We've uh, had several unsuccessful attempts. We were able to find several big groups of bulls and too many eyes. And what Lauren told me, this was one of the toughest animals to hunt here in Ruvu Masai land. And we were able to, we jumped out of the truck to, to chase a warthog and he gave us a slip. So we stayed after him and hiked what seemed like 100 miles but probably only a few miles and uh, Lauren spotted uh, this lone bull on the uh, on the other ridge and we made a stalk on him we were able to uh, we had him at 450 didn't feel comfortable with the shot so we got up to about 200 um, got close enough made a decent shot uh, slowed him down uh, tracked him for another um, couple hundred yards and found him right under this uh, this tree here in this anthill and had to put the finishing shot on him but Super excited to have this animal. It's uh, it's been an extremely tough animal to hunt here. I was shocked at how at how tough it was. But what a beautiful beautiful day, and and to have this done this late in the safari is is, uh, is a blessing. Thank you.
Well, here we are on next to last day of Masai, our Maasai land hunt. We were fortunate enough to uh, come across a group of bachelor zebras. This guy was the biggest. Dallas looked up and saw the black on the zebra and said, this is the one that we've got to take. So we got in position, made a short stalk, uh, getting close to running out of 300 PRC ammo. So Lauren was gracious enough to let me borrow his 300 wind mag. And as you can see, it was pretty deadly. Lights out. Happy, happy, happy to get this, take this guy home with us on the, uh, close to the last day of our safari. Today's our last day of the safari. Uh, we decided to come all the way to our other concession called Maasai West, also known as Lobo. Uh, seemed like it was as far as Timbuktu because it took us about three hours to get here today. Got here nice and early, um, trying to find one of these beautiful white bearded wildebeest. We found a nice herd. The conditions are quite hard right now. It's very dry, so there's not as many wildebeest as usual. So we decided to take the opportunity and take this incredibly old uh, beautiful bull. Um, this is a fantastic specimen, Brad. This is, as I mentioned, this is a white bearded wildebeest and it's endemic to both southern and northern parts of Maasai land. So this is a really beautiful specimen. You did a great shot and congratulations. Tough animal. Fun oh yeah. Fun hunt. Here we are in Lobo Maasai land with two great specimens of the uh, eastern white bearded wildebeest. Learned a little bit. There's a western white bearded uh, wildebeest that has a little bigger bosses, but these uh, easterns are a little, a little wider than those. If you want to come and try your long range out here in Maasai land, this is the place to do it. Uh, this is the most open country I've seen in 20 days now. Uh, so we were able to uh, stretch our legs a little bit and try some of our long range that we learned at FTW Ranch um, down here on the savannah. So it was a, a great, uh, we do have an afternoon left, but this was a great morning uh, to get this done. It was a pretty nice trek, about two and a half hours from where we're staying down here to the open plains and uh, definitely well worth the trip.
Well, these are the results of a proper pig hunt. Uh, we've been chasing this guy for the past three days. We ran him out of his home. Uh, we were not prepared uh, the past couple of days. And, and I told Lauren early on that, uh, man, I would love to try to try to get a uh, warthog with my 500. And uh, he, he hatched a plan and, and the plan worked flawlessly on, on day three. We stalked up to where we thought he was gonna be. Uh, he sent a couple of boys on the left side to flank him if he came out. This pig absolutely did everything that we needed it to do for me to make a successful shot uh, with this 500 from 30, 40 yards. But uh, tail end of the safari, and what a way to go out with uh, with a pig hunt uh, like we have. And this is a giant. This is the biggest one I've been hunting two years here now, and this is by far the biggest warthog that I've seen. So awesome experience. Plan worked flawlessly. Good job, buddy. It was awesome. This is how you close a safari. I mean, today has just been one of those days. I mean, there's some days that are slow where things don't come together. Today was definitely not one of those days. I mean, we went to Lobo, shot two wildebeest, which is what we set out to do. We came back on the way back and decided that we were gonna try for that really big single tusk warthog that we've been trying for for the last couple days. Um, we managed to connect on him, which was just an incredible accomplishment. We were on our way back to camp for lunch and Brad and I were just talking about how nice it would be to finish on the elusive greater kudu. Um, we came around the corner not too far from camp and saw this bull in the shade just escaping the scorching heat. Managed to get up pretty quickly. Uh, the greater kudu decided to move off but Brad did an incredible moving shot on him. Uh, he didn't go more than 10 yards. This has been the most elusive of all the animals that we've chased here in Maasai land. So, to get one, especially one of this age, I mean, geez, I couldn't think of a better way to close this trip, Brad, so congratulations. I mean, once in a lifetime, buddy, well done. Thank you guys for all the hard work, Barry. Lauren, thank you all for everything. Uh, what a great trip, and the way, to, the way we closed out today, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Just great trip all the way around. Thank you. here in Ruvu Maasai 2022. Um, it's been an incredibly successful safari as you can tell. I mean I don't think any of us really imagined to do as well as we did. We've got some incredible trophies here and you know what makes them special is not just horn length, it's the age um, of some of these spectacular animals. 
Uh, we really hunted hard, Brad. You really put in the effort. I mean, you know, you had to climb Mount Kilimanjaro a couple of times. Uh, your pH put you through some punishment, but like with all things, the harder you work, um, the more patient you are, this is the result. Um, and you really earned every single trophy that you got here. Nothing came easy, especially the leopard after 30 some days of, of hunting. It finally came together and no one more deserving. Um, I want to thank you for your friendship. I want to thank you for your patience, Brad. It's been an absolute pleasure like always. I really look forward to the many more that we do together because they really are the highlight of my year. So congratulations, buddy. Awesome. Good job. It gets better every year. Yeah, thank does. you for everything. And we got Barry Whitaker too, so that was. Barry Whitaker's with us. Time for Sloan to clear out some wall space. <laughs>